Hello, everyone. I'm Maria Flesherio. I'm a professor of medicine and neurological surgery and the director of the Pituitary Center at Oregon Health and Science University in Portland, Oregon. I have been invited on behalf of the authors to talk about our work presented at Endo Society in Boston, continued improvement in hypertension and diabetes during long-term oscillodostrate therapy in patients with Cushing disease, a pooled analysis from the phase three, link three and link four studies. First, let's start talking about Cushing's disease. Cushing's disease is a rare disorder unfortunately still undiagnosed in many patients and in almost all of them with lay diagnosis, most predominantly in female, which treatment first is transphenoidal surgery, but it doesn't work in everybody. And we know that the recurrences are much higher than we previously thought, up to 30 or 35% of patients can have recurrence during their lifetime. So it's very important to have treatments in addition to surgery. And now we have several medical therapies approved. There have been attended presented several other clinical trials with new therapies, very exciting data. And also patients have uh, needs for, if in case of emergencies, bilateral adrenectomy or radiation therapy. And in most cases, a combination of all these treatments that we have mentioned. Uh, also, what's important is that patients with Cushing's disease and Cushing's syndrome also have significant comorbidities. And these comorbidities play a role in their increased risk of mortality that persists even after remission. And also it's important how we think about the disorder in general, and we have to treat aggressively all the comorbidities, especially hypercoagulability. And this is a new topic that patients with Cushing's have increased risk of thrombotic events. In a meta-analysis, we have published that it's up to 18 times higher risk than normal population, for example. And then of course, increased risk of hypertension and diabetes. Now let's go back to our study where we have analyzed 210 patients from link three and link four, and we had a pooled analysis and we analyzed the data up to week 72. Now keep in mind, oscillodostat is an 11 beta hydroxylase inhibitor, which blocks the adrenal secretion of cortisol and it's very potent and it's taken twice a day orally. In our studies, in combined data, the studies had different design. I'm not going to go into all the details right now. Before initiation of oscillodostat, 83% of patients had hypertension. So keep in mind, this is Cushing's after several other treatments. And the severity of hypertension decreased over long-term oscillodostat treatment. And many patients with hypertension showed improvements in blood pressure, and these were maintained during long-term. Now, if we're looking at the decrease in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure, it, we have seen during the first 12 weeks. And what was interestingly at week 72 were maintained even in patients that were not uh, controlled completely. So this is interesting that we have to readjust the medications and the mean changes uh, varied both for systolic and diastolic. Now, What's important is that most patients that had high blood pressure at baseline were normal tensive at week 12. So again, this is very important. We have been able to treat some of the comorbidities. Now, what's in interesting is that the, if they had higher baseline systolic and diastolic, also they experienced greatest reduction in blood pressure. And it was a negative correlation between change in systolic and diastolic blood pressure from baseline to week 72 and baseline systolic and diastolic blood pressure uh, with uh, significant uh, statistical changes. Now, if we're looking at the patients with hypertension the, and how much they were controlled in function of the urinary free cortisol, because in Cushing's, we try to control the cortisol, but we also try to control the comorbidities. So was this any correlation in between? And Patients with hypertension at baseline who achieved complete or partial urinary free cortisol control had decreased systolic and uh, diastolic blood pressure. While if they were completely uncontrolled, values remained similar. So some of these patients throughout the study, it, it's hard to, to really look at too many details for uncontrolled because very few patients were uncontrolled um, long-term. And again, there was a weak correlation between changes in systolic and blood pressure and changes in urine uh, from baseline to week 72. What was, again, 
very interesting and I wanted to highlight because we recommend this in guidelines in all patients is changing the antihypertensive medications and the antidiabetic for that matter. We'll talk later because for these, in these studies, before initiation of oscillodostat, 54% of patients were taking antihypertensive medications, and many of these patients were able to either reduce their dose or just stopping altogether. So if these patients would not be followed in clinic all the time, then they will become hypotensive if the doses are not changed. So during 72 weeks of oscillodostat treatment, 27% of patients who took medications at baseline were able to reduce the dose or just stop taking the medication uh, overall. And also not everybody will have this. So 25% had the dose of their baseline antihypertensive medication actually increased. So it's very important to look in details because each patient uh, could need different adjustments of medications. What was again, important to highlight is that comorbidities associated with hypertension, mean weight, waist circumference, and BMI were uh, improving in these studies in patients both with or without hypertension at baseline. So this is a summary of what happened with hypertension, and you'll see similar trends in the diabetes groups also. Before initiation of oscillodostat, 40% of patients had diabetes. Keep in mind, this is very frequent a diagnosis at Cushing's. These were patients with more severe disease that had other treatments. Most of them failed surgery uh, and or other treatments. And the same trend, the severity of the disease decreased over long-term oscillodostat treatment. Many patients with diabetes had improved glycemic control, and these were maintained um, further throughout the duration of the study. Some improvements were seen very rapidly because the urinary cortisol goes down within the first 12 weeks. And we've seen this both for glucose and A1C with some improvements directly in uh, A1C per se. Of the patients with A1C more than 6.5 at baseline, 59% had A1C less than 6.5 at week 12, 62 had A1C less than 6.5 at week 72. So clearly improvement over time. And the same thing as with hypertension, if they had higher baseline glucose than A1C, experience the greatest reduction. So patients that have more severe comorbidities will see improvement over time. How about medications in these patients? Before initiation of oscillodostat at the beginning of the study, 22% of patients were taking antidiabetic medications, and many patients were able to either reduce their dose or stop taking their medication uh, completely. And then again, 53% had no change to their baseline antidiabetic medication. And this is why these studies are so complex, because if the patients had the disease, um, for a long time, some of these comorbidities will never improve. And in some others, we need to stop the medications. And in few, we have to increase the dose. 11% of these patients had a dose of their baseline antidiabetic medication increased, or they started uh, new antidiabetic medications. And again, if we're trying to correlate with UFC control, the picture is a little bit more complicated. The glucose decrease in patients with complete control, but remains stable in patients with partial control or uncontrolled, just because it was an improvement overall. And some of the medications have been changed. So it's hard to say the key message would be, we need to control the Cushing, so we need to control the cortisol in all these patients. But also the comorbidities are very frequent, but are important to treat in the same time with their own medication. But also those medications have to be properly adjusted for these patients because some of these um, nuances of decreasing doses, very few need increasing doses. And uh, furthermore, they, they need to uh, have screening for cardiovascular disorders in uh, general. 